Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Boss Rush Podcast, a great place to play games and be better. I'm one of your hosts, Corey Darrigan, alongside me, shoving food in his face, the sleeveless PC muscle race himself, Laurent Dawkins. What's up, everybody? How's it going? Hi, Laurent. Hello. How's it going? Uh, pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm freaking exhausted. Um, my, my, my back is like on the mend because um, I hurt myself Sunday, mm. and um, and you know uh, it's just this has been a busy week, and I got to worry about moving and stuff. And I did the adult thing and didn't buy a Switch OLED on impulse, well, even failed. though it was it, even though it was the white system. It's the one I wanted. You failed. Um, I'm being an adult though because I gotta spend money on furniture and other adult crap and and I, and you know it's kind of like you know how it's, it's kind of like how you know like how when you're out and and you're hungry so you think about going so you think about stopping somewhere and getting something to eat and then you then you think to yourself I have food at home mm. kind of how this thing goes with the with, with the switch OLED I'm like I looked at it they had 11 of them in stock because I actually sat there and counted them through the glass and I was like hmm and I was like, my switch is my switch is working just fine at home. Let me go home before I before I wreck my wreck my finances for this move. <laughs> wow. Also joining us is the mad pharmacist herself, Stephanie Klimov. Hello. I, I parked my car at Harvard Yard. Nah, you're gonna <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna make stories. You like so that mad. story? Your favorite accent. Oh, it's funny. <laughs> he was going on about it on Arsenal X the other day. I'm just like, oh my god. It's actually a pretty ugly accent, but I've learned to embrace it. That's fine. I mean, to be fair, you don't really talk like that. No, I don't. Yeah, I was don't. really being obnoxious. That's fine. Sometimes obnoxious is fun. I do say you know. wicked a lot, though. And yeah, but that's that's a, that's a word, though. That's a regional word, you know? It's, like, yeah. it's not like you're saying, like, I don't know. I don't know if you've ever seen the Jim Gaffigan donuts, Dunkin' Donuts, wicked awesome skit. Mm -hmm. It's just like that. It's not like that. So. True. Yeah. So hello. Hi. It's podcast night. Woohoo! Best uh, night yes. of the week. I'm yes, trying. Indeed. I'm trying something new here with the show notes instead of typing them out. Since we're kind of like so behind the scenes, I decided on my own without really talking to anybody that we're going to have like a, a show running style discord server, private discord server for ourselves. And so I'm testing that out. We're going to see how it goes. I don't know it, if it's a good it, idea it or a bad the, idea, but it could be the greatest thing ever. Or it could be one roaring shit show. No, we're not going to make it a shit show. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. I'm going to make it work. <laughs> I spent too much time on it setting it up to make it not work. I know, I know. It's a whole ass Discord. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, I try I did my best, okay? I'm sorry. You know what? I'll just delete it. Let's start over. Oh, now why you gone hurt his feelings. Yeah, why would you why would you do that? I I did not make any derogatory <laughs> comments. I just said it's a whole ass Discord you made. Damn. It it is. I I set it up the way I set my work slack up and it's very Damn. nice. <laughs> Do you need a Do you need a, a a chocolate bar or something? Come on, man. Do I? Yeah, that'd be awesome. You got one. <laughs> I, I mean, mean I, not I that mean, I do, but by the time but by the time you get over here, it's gonna I'm gonna eat it. I mean, <laughs> you're gonna eat it before you spit out your next sentence, probably. Yeah, we see we see how <laughs> yeah. you eat on the pre-show. No, look, my pants told me today that I do not need another chocolate bar. Okay, I. So I came from a very physical job to a job where I don't do any physical activity whatsoever except with my fingers. And it's like, <laughs> man, I got to so, I got to do something. I got to figure something out because it's bad. So so basically every pair of pants in your in your in your closet is like, bruh, <laughs> not every pair. I Maybe to, your sweatpants. I had to dust off the old <laughs> standbys. <laughs> it's fine. Those are the, those are the ones that those are the ones that tell you you're you you need to get back on track. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know I am going to because I am taking my paid time off uh, before Christmas, and then I have a week off for Christmas and New Year's, and so I'm gonna use that as like a reset on everything. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, yeah, I'm. 
How much? How much weight are you trying to reset? I mean, here's the thing: I haven't gained any weight. My body weight has my body form you're one, has just you're one of those changed. you're one of those that evenly distributes the weight. Yeah, I yeah. have that problem too. Like it it takes it takes a while of me being over uh, being overweight before I look overweight. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, hmm. it's just not good. So and then. And then Stephanie comes comes. I know. God, stop. No. Chat. Stop. No. She made me feel like a worthless piece of shit. That's not the. Oh. God. It it was a very painful workout. I like couldn't even like you know the, the muscles you would take just to pull your shirt off. I couldn't even perform that action because all my I pulled all my muscles. Hmm. I pulled my groin. Like it's just oh, I, I I can't I can't I don't know oh. what I was doing in class. Oh. No. Looking like a fool. Yeah, I I got the notification and I I'm like God, I just that you just make me feel like I should just crawl under some rocks and go away for a while, <laughs> wither away. <laughs> God. Oh. Oh man. Anyways, by the way, Stephanie's ripped. So in case you guys are wondering, for real, for real, for real. No. No, oh, no, it's a blurry picture. You make me feel like a pasty white grimace from mcdonald's <laughs> well you know what if you took up pole dancing you'd look like that too no i just fall i just look silly and hurt myself it's fine it's okay well they ho- they host private parties if you guys ever come up to boston oh god <laughs> <laughs> Why so? Why so? So can ask me? Do I do do uh, have? Is this my first time doing this? <laughs> or, or, or better yet, this isn't your first time doing this, is it? Oh God! They're they're a great great group of people in, in class. Actually, oh, yeah. I've had guys in class before. Oh, I wonder why. Hmm. <laughs> oh no, no. <laughs> uh, anyway, moving on. Moving on. Let's. I'm. Um, we're gonna get in trouble here. Uh. Where do we go from here? I guess uh, I guess I'll just read housekeeping. And we can just jump into what we've been playing. So, uh, this is the Boss Rush Podcast, a flagship show of the Boss Rush Network, where each and every week we get together with our friends from around the internet to talk about video games, gaming culture, and everything we love about it. You can catch us live on twitch.tv slash Boss Rush Network or on YouTube and podcast services every Monday morning or on our website. Leave us a five-star review on iTunes and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Remember, you can find all of our content on BossRush.net. Quick reminder, the store is now open where you can get all of your merch, including shirts, mugs, stickers, hoodies, and more. Stephanie's repping the Boss Rush writing team shirt. Support our writing team, people. Woo! They do good work. They do. I see good If you don't support us, we will starve. No, Stephanie will just come murder you and hide you in the river or something. Hey, don't tell him my secret. <laughs> Stephanie actually stores cinder blocks in her basement and just brings them to people. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, we have new logos, new new shirt styles. We have the Snack Tendo logo. We have the uh, Talk the Walk logo. And we have the Stoy Catchphrase Sick from Arsenal X. You can go check those out. We also have all of our podcast logos, so you can buy whatever show you like. Rep it, rep it wisely. We're gonna have a couple new logos too coming for our uh, new shows coming in the new year. Yeah. Very excited, very excited. Uh, got a few recording this week, so uh, they're not coming out yet. They're not gonna be live, but they're they're coming. I'm very excited. After dark, everybody, you wanted it. It's coming. Laurent's mm-hmm. hosting it. Mm-hmm. So. You know it's going to be good. Hmm. That's debatable, but I mean, I mean, come on. <laughs> just I, like I mean, I mean, come on. I was talking about pole with Stephanie. Come on now. I mean, uh, come on now. No, Y'all are in for a treat. Stop. Y'all are in for a he's, treat. He's the one that always shows the most skin on this show. I know, <laughs> right? I've been trying to encourage the, all the other boys and girls here over at Boss Rush. Like, just, hey, let's, I let's all hang out. I wasn't wearing <laughs> sleeves last night during our meeting, Laron. That's true. That is true. Oh, I missed it. Uh, it wasn't a full. It wasn't a full on tank. He he had he had like a he no. had like a that was a cutoff, wasn't it? No, it's just like a it, sleeveless. It was 
It was sure. a sleeve. Is okay. Yeah. It, just wear under my work clothes because, well, I don't know. I, I feel mean, better I about myself. So. But I mean, I can't. I can't. I, you know, I can't just overtly sexually harass like the boss. Come on now. <laughs> Not with that attitude. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is this after dark right now? <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> like, like, like we were having a conversation in, uh, in, 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 uh, in the new Discord. Uh, it was, uh, it was, it was uh, Corey, Austin, and, and, and me. And uh, and Austin said something. And I was like, "Hold on, man!" Is like you need to you like get cleared by your wife before you start engaging <laughs> in extracurricular activities in here. <laughs> and he was and, and Austin's dumbass is like, "If she's not here, it doesn't. Mean I can do whatever I want." <laughs> oh, man, yeah, it, <sighs> it it it's gonna get rowdy in this tiny Discord we've created. So, all right, guys. What are we? What are we playing? What are we watching? What are we? What are we doing? Stephanie, what are you playing? Watching. So since I got the OLED, I well, I wanted to finish one of the games I I, I started, and that was Firewatch. And I thought Firewatch would be a nice game to play on the OLED. Um, it came out in 2016. It's by Campo Santo. Um, I heard it on another podcast, and the story seemed intriguing, so I went and got it. And I am hoping. That there will be a talk a walk on that eventually. Um, so I beat that, beat Firewatch. It it's it's stunning to look at. Um, it it is kind of like a walking simulator where you just talk to some other person, look out through the walkie talkie, and you choose the dialogue. It ends up turning into like almost like an Alfred Hitchcock like plot by the end. Like it's very a weird mystery unravels that makes you feel wicked uneasy and it's not what i thought like so overall the premise was good it just the beginning seemed completely disjointed from the end like that was not what i was expecting but uh the voice acting was great the music was great um i recommend it i am going to be writing a, a game review on that and then last night i played through speed dating for ghosts i think celeste re- recommended that to me um it sounds like something celeste would play yep <laughs> and i i got through the entire game like in an hour and it's pretty freaking hilarious you literally go through speed dating rounds with various ghosts and the, the art styles like hand drawn like as if like a troubled teenager drew them or something mm-hmm. and one of them was super scary i wasn't expecting it this ghost named gary and you go on a date with gary and he shows you where he died, but the twist was he died because he murdered someone. And then there's like a, you know, the vibration feature that I hadn't, because it was early in the game, that I wasn't expecting. So all of a sudden the image changed. And it was like the scary ghost and the whole entire OLED just vibrated. And I actually <laughs> jumped in my bed and I'm like, what the heck? That's not what I expected from this silly little game called Speed Dating for Ghosts. Um, so that's fun there. I, I need to get back to Guardians. I really want to actually finish it by the end of the year. That's my goal. Um, and then, yeah, I, I really need to finish Guardians, so, um, I don't think I'm watching anything. I've just been kind of playing those games. Hmm. There you go. Nice. So, Firewatch, Speed Dating with Ghosts, and what was the other one you said? Uh, Guardians. 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 All right. Uh, Laron, what are you, uh, what are you, what are you playing? Watching. Um... Because I've been getting ready to to move, like um, I'll probably be I'll probably be in my, let's see, uh, I'll probably be in moved into the the new place. I'll be in there. I'll be in there before Christmas. I don't know if it'll be bef- bef- when we uh, when we roll to the next to next week's next week's uh, show, but um, I will be in there before Christmas. So I've been just getting ready and prepped for the move and everything. Um, but um, I did manage because I didn't play a lot. I haven't played a lot recently, but I did manage to to strike up the strike up the Nintendo Switch Ooh. and uh, play me play me because um because I'm 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 so sad right now. Uh, I went to the, I went to the eShop to, to start my pre order for Advance Wars uh, one and two uh, boot camp, mm-hmm. and they stealth they stealth delayed it. Like it had already <gasps> been it had already been pushed it had already been pushed back to February. But when I went Again? on the e- uh, well, yeah, well, well, that was the first. That was the first uh, delay because it's spo- it was supposed mm-hmm. to be out this week. Yeah, um, relatively. Um, <clears throat> so it was it was pushed back to February. Initially, Nintendo made the announcement on that. So um, I was like, well, it's December now, so I'll jump on the eShop and I'll go ahead and um, and drop the pre order for it. So uh, so it's ready to go when I when on day one for me. 
And uh, the damn eShop said it was coming out in May. Hmm. So there was Oof. there was there was no announcement on that. So I'm so so yeah, I was upset, you know. Uh, uh, but, but since I had my Switch on, I was like, you know what? I want to get my damn Advance Wars fix in now. So you know, like, uh, so I was I I picked up and got back in the war groove. Ooh, I knew you were gonna and say that. God, I love I I I, I, I forgot how much I love that game. Like, it, it, it's it's so I. It's so cartoony, but it's so fun, and it's so mature, and it it it, it, it ticks all the boxes off. If you if you like Advance Wars or Fire Emblem, like this is basically a mashup of the two games. There's so much going on. There's more. There's more strategy and more and, and more shenanigans in this game and stuff like that. And I I love it. And uh, and here's the big one. Here's the big one. Saturday, the boyfriend and I watched Shang Chi. <gasps> Tell I got us. I gotta say, this is one of my this is one of my favorite Marvel movies uh, yeah, for right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm trying to figure out. Okay, so so Shang Chi is actually a serious Marvel movie. Um, it is, you know, because because um, my I think my alt I think my I think as as a matter of fact, my favorite Marvel movies are Captain America: The Winter Soldier, Captain America: Civil War, Black Panther. And um, and I did and um, and uh, of course Thor Ragnarok. As a matter of fact, my top five uh, are it, it would are those four, including including uh, uh, Ant Man. Well, I'm sorry, including um, including Infinity War. So the five ser- my five favorite series movies are, are those. Um, my my favorite my favorite movie that's not directly tied to the MCU is uh, is Ant Man. And I gotta say, like like. Shang Chi. That's actually a serious movie. It's it, it it kicks off Phase Four, so I had to figure out. I gotta figure out where it falls in with the with the first five I put in. But right now, like Shang Chi and and freaking Ant Man are like my favorite movies right now. Um, I loved it, and you know, like my 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 home girl Michelle Yeoh's in it. Uh, mm, uh. I was like, if I realized she was in this movie sooner, I would have been there, <laughs> been in the theaters watching this bad boy. <laughs> I knew I was going to see Shang Chi, but but like I explained uh, a while back on on this very show, uh, the time it came out, I was still a little COVID shy as far as being being sardined in in, in, um, in a movie theater with people, and you know I have trust issues. <laughs> I have trust issues. Like people people don't do what they're supposed to do. No, that's they're lazy and they're liars. Mm. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I was like, I'm not ready for this yet. Um, but now now I'm now I've gotten to the gotten a little bit better and and um and i was telling them i was i suggested the boyfriend last night before because he's getting ready to, he's getting go out of town for uh for christmas break i'll suggest him last night that yeah, we try and see west side story before he heads out how was that or are you oh, gonna, I, I, you're I, gonna try to see it okay yeah we're gonna we're gonna try and see them uh hopefully uh hopefully i'll try uh hopefully i'll try to we'll we'll see it by tomorrow hopefully yeah. cool cool that that's it yeah, that's it. That's it. So uh, those are my big ones for uh, for this week. Uh, 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 War Groove and uh, Shang Chi. But Shang Chi, really happy you saw that. Shang Chi was an amazing movie. I love I love the uh, I love the writing. Uh, like the story was well put together. I mean, it was it was serious, and you know, like like the like the action, the all the fight sequ- all the fight scenes are great and yeah. stuff like that. The bus scene was cool too. Like the oh, bus scene yeah. was awesome. Yeah. yeah, it really it really was like it's a it's a good movie. If uh, I recommend for anybody that has not who has not seen it yet, you know, for, for whatever reasons, like if you're a Disney Plus subscriber, there's no reason that you shouldn't have seen it by now because you can actually watch it on Disney Plus without paying the premium. Um, it's the and, first uh, it's the first Marvel movie in a while that I'm like, I want to rewatch that soon. Uh-huh. Yeah. And yeah, not yeah. and not just part of like, a Oh, the next movie's coming out. I got to rewatch all the movies. You know, like I, this is one that I would be like, okay, I just want to sit down and watch this again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like for real. Like speaking as someone like you know half Asian, and I've I've I have a black belt in the martial arts, and you know I'm very familiar with you know various fighting styles. Like I was I was impressed, and I'm and I'm you know I, I would have been crushed if they did not nail the fighting. Um, oh yeah, or you know choreo. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's a it's a great it's a great movie. I loved it. Uh, How about you, Corey? I guess it's my turn. So <laughs> I've been like neck deep in Halo Infinite. I uh, I really like Halo Infinite. I think it's a great game. 
Uh, I have a couple tiny issues with it, uh, especially like when it comes to the story. Like it's like the story's good. It's fine. Uh, the gameplay is really good. I think the open world stuff in Halo really works for it, and it almost makes me wonder why they didn't do this before. Although Halo Five was actually supposed to be this way, but they had to, they changed it, and obviously Xbox One had a great launch and fantastic you know <laughs> uh, reputation moving forward after that launch. Uh, but Halo Infinite's open world is awesome. They, there's like there's eight main towers that you have to take out, but there's also like four operating bases and major boss fights and high value targets that you can take out and gain special weapons for your uh, for your own forward operating base that you can just kind of like manifest whenever you want. Uh, it's just fun to play and and I. I I understand why it's not there because it was probably a technological nightmare to have co-op in this. But when the co-op campaign stuff comes out in May or June, like I want to play this with a bunch of friends and take out these outposts with friends mm-hmm. and uh, like play, replay the campaign with friends because it's just like swinging around with the grappling hook too is like it's a game changer. That grapple shot is just this the. the it's the tiniest thing, but it changes so many things. It changes traversal. It changes how you pick up weapons. It changes how you fight enemies. It changes the way, like, you can grab these plasma containers with the grapple shot. You can grapple a plasma container towards you and throw it at an enemy, and it feels so good to do. Or, like, uh, I have the, like, this uh, shot grappler now where if you grapple an enemy it automatically stuns them. And then as you're flying towards them with a well-timed uh, melee shot, you can just take them out and it feels so satisfying. <laughs> or another thing is when you're in a flying vehicle, when you're in the, when you're in the wasp, which is uh, like the human kind of hella, hella helicopter type thing. Uh, and, and you get shot down. If you jump out, and you find the vehicle that shot you down, you can grapple to the vehicle and kick out the pilot and take over that vehicle, which I've done a couple times. And it feels so satisfying to do that. It's just, it's just a a wonderfully crafted game. My only issue so far is with the story. I haven't a hundred percent of the story yet, and I am not doing it on legendary. I'm sorry. Just not to get like (laughs) the, the real ending quote unquote. Uh, but a lot of the story from Halo 4 and 5 is just kind of left by the wayside unless you go search for the audio logs and the rest of those those stories are told through the audio logs. And this is like, I know they said that this, is, this was a sequel to Halo 5, but it's also like a spiritual reboot. And like, they're really leaning heavily on the reboot type thing, spiritual reboot type thing. And... uh no mention of the Prometheans, which were like the big bads of the last two games. Cortana like is mentioned, but you barely like encounter anything that has to do with Cortana. And like huh. the char- like I like the new characters, but they haven't been around long enough for you to like feel the impact of their story yet. Mm. Although I, I am kind of I, I do kind of have a soft spot for the weapon, the new AI that you are carrying around. She's like, she's awesome. She has here's no a name. question. What? Here's a here's a question. The <coughs> the Halo series is coming out on Paramount Plus. Is that when? Is that is that like a oh boy a offshoot of, of the main of the main Halo storyline, or is it actually going to fill some gaps in? Nope, it's a reimagining of the oh. Halo universe. It's not following the games. It's not following the. It's like not following the canon of the games and the books and the comics and whatever oh, else they've know. done. I don't know how I feel about that now. I know I don't. A lot of people don't know how they f- how you feel about it, but they're also like adapting oh, it f- to the for TV because it's really hard to shove a twelve to fifteen hour campaign into a movie or a TV show, right? I mean, I think they're trying to do something different because of how many movies or TV shows from games have failed, and so I think they're just trying to change it up and see if it works. I like you know, I they've they've nailed the look. Although if this is like 
pre Halo One, Master Chief is wearing the wrong armor, but that's it's a side thing. We'll let it go. It looks still looks good. Uh they've invented new characters for the series, new Spartans that aren't in the lore, so right there is what kind of tipped everybody off that this was like its own thing. They nailed the look mm-hmm. of the vehicles. We haven't seen any of the enemies yet, like any of the Covenant. Mm. Uh, so I don't know. It I I'll watch it because it's Halo and I run an Xbox podcast, so should probably watch it. Uh, but we'll see. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Okay. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Halo, I've also been playing a lot of Destiny 2's 30th anniversary event, which is <laughs> all pretty much Halo themed, Halo marathon and, and myth themed. It's, I mean, that we, we played the the new dungeon, which was pretty cool. Uh, I'm trying to get the Halo one pistol, which is an exotic weapon in this game. Uh, three shot burst, three headshot, three shots to the head. You're dead. Just doesn't matter. That's what the weapons always been. That's what it is in this game. Um, Nothing really else to say for people who don't really play Destiny. You won't understand, so I don't... I, it's so hard to explain Destiny to people who don't play Destiny, so it's like, <laughs> you know. Uh, the new six-player activity is okay, but the dungeon is really cool. The three-player dungeon is really, really cool. Mm. Definitely the easiest dungeon they've put out, but still really fun. Uh, on top of that, I watched the Xbox documentary, Power On. Which Corey, was Corey, can you tell Laurent to stop eating cookies? I know. I'm trying to ignore him. Angry. Look, I'm trying to ignore I him. I want to eat the cookies, and he's just constantly eating them. I know. Laurent, Sorry. Just... Laurent, this is why Stephanie <laughs> looks like she does, and this is why we look like we do. <laughs> she can no, not eat the I know. cookies, I, and I, we I will eat out. the entire bag. I work out four days a week. I could look much better if I just stop no. eating the junk food, especially... It's just like... He's rubbing it in my face. He's eating this cookie with M and M's in it, and I'm just salivating he, over here, just with my bottle of <laughs> star. Okay, can I can I at least finish this one? I already took a bite out. <laughs> no, just shove it all in. You just got to shove it in now, Laurent. Oh, God, didn't didn't we just say that it's something like that earlier? <laughs> it's good practice for later, Laurent. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry to interrupt, Corey. Oh, it's okay. Uh, I watched the Xbox doc documentary that they released this week, uh, six part. Uh, each episode's like forty five minutes. It's free. It's on their YouTube channel. It's on their website. It's on. The, it's it's pretty much everywhere. I think they said so. Uh, it's I'm called, big on documentaries. I'll have to check it out. Yeah, it's very good. Uh, it was co produced by Microsoft, so like, it it doesn't have the feel that it's produced by Microsoft, but there's like. You know, it's it's kind of in the back of your head that, oh, well, maybe they're not telling the whole story. But they, they go deep on some stuff, man. They went in hard on the Don Matrick, like, you know, deal with it thing in the $600 box and how he almost killed the Xbox. And he gave an interview in this documentary of how he wished he would have, like, you know, in hindsight, that was the wrong decision. Uh, and... Yeah. It was very interesting, and like the first couple episodes, kind of focus on uh, the first episode's called the Renegades, and it's kind of the small team in Microsoft who are secretly making a game console in Microsoft's basement, and then trying to pitch really? it to, trying to pitch it to Bill Gates. So wait, 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 so wait, so wait, so wait. It wasn't it wasn't an original idea from the powers that be. No, no, mm. uh, gutsy, yeah. gutsy. It's it's really fascinating. And like the demo unit that they were presenting to the public for the first time, they were literally still soldering it together when the presentation started. And like they were <laughs> they were hoping that it would work. And like the box that they showed didn't have the hardware in it. The hardware was actually in a giant computing station underneath the podium. <laughs> it was crazy. This the docu like the story of the original Xbox in particular is just fascinating so and is it just on the original xbox no, or is it, it goes all the way up, like the history of it it goes all the way up through i would say the last the last episode kind of goes into what they're when phil spencer took over and kind of what they're doing now kind of thing mm. uh, 
but they they nice. went they went deep on the Red Ring of Death. They went deep on the Xbox One launch. They went deep on the. They even mentioned the PlayStation thing. Remember the when uh, uh, Shuhei Yoshida and Adam Boys did the. Here's how you trade games with your friends, and they just handed them the game because Xbox was always going to be online, and you couldn't share your license with your game because the game yeah. license was tied to that box and everything. So. Yeah, that was uh it's really good. I highly recommend it. Even if you're not an Xbox fan, it's really cool to learn about the history of the box and how many how like awful de- <laughs> getting that box off the ground and how like the highs of the 360 and then the lows of the Xbox 1. It's just it's really fascinating. I would watch it. Just go watch it. Everybody watch it. So. We'll do. I like I like that type of stuff. I'm 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 that nerdy geeky person. Now we'll watch that type of stuff. Yeah. Once again, tell everybody where you can find it at. Uh, just YouTube.com/slash Xbox. You can find it there. You can also find I posted the entire documentary on our website. You can also go to BossRush.net uh, and find the Power On article. It should be uh, somewhere on the front page. So it's cool. Uh, Power On: The Story of Xbox watch it uh all right well i guess we can get into topics now if you want who wants to who wants to go first because laron was eating cookies in front of my face he should go first yeah that's true well i mean i mean hey i'll i'll, I'll make this i'll make my topic food topic then <laughs> Nah. The torture continues. Nah, I, I will not. I will not. I will not be that that person. All right. So um, let's see. As of the recording of this show right now, we're 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 basically nine days out for Christmas. And you know what? I love I love when Corey tells this story. So I want it. I I want everybody to hear it. Uh, uh, for everybody that's new to the Bossers podcast, I forgot. It, like, hold on. Keep talking. What happened? Uh, I like. I want. I want people to hear like our 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 best. <laughs> Hey, hey! I want I Yay. want people to hear like our best our best Christmas memories or our best our best or our best gifting memories and stuff like that because I know not everybody celebrates Christmas but they sell but a lot of people celebrate the spirit of of this season and there's gift giving to be done there's things that we're there's things that you know like we're appreciative of and things like that so so uh, Corey why don't you start this off real quickly because guess what I'll be right oh just, just, what? you want me to tell the story cookies? and then you're leaving. No, no, no! It's not. He's gonna no, go. No, 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 no. He's gonna go cower in his kitchen and just eat the rest of the cookies, Stephanie. While we're... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he's like, I can't eat it in front of Steph. He's just gonna be like a little. So. Uh, no, no, I have one of these too. Wait, now I feel left out. <laughs> <laughs> I what can't do doing? this. With the, I can't do this with the headphones on. <laughs> you failed, the wrong. <laughs> and I have, and I have more hair on my head than I did the last time I wore this thing. All right. I'll get the my hat, but I have to wait to, and listen to Corey's story first. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I I need Corey to start this off. Oh gosh. Are, are you telling t- talking about the one about my grandma? Yes. In sixty four <laughs> story. Okay. So when I was a wee lad, I wanted a Nintendo sixty four, and I didn't think I was gonna get one because they were expensive, and you know parents are you know trying to save money and try to do everything that you want them to do and everything so i was like okay probably not getting one but i wanted a couple games i asked for a couple games for like sega and whatever else i had at the time and under the tree on christmas morning was a bunch of gifts and one of them was super mario 64 now i didn't have a nintendo 64 so i was like (laughs) Why am I getting a Nintendo 64 game? And uh, usually, like, my parents were pretty knowledgeable for the time, you know, as they could be, you know, because whatever. And so I opened the rest of my gifts and whatever. They, like, I got I got most of the things I wanted, I think. Uh, no Nintendo 64. So my grandma always spent Christmas with us and she usually, she used to spend the night at our house and then, you know, we would open her gifts in the morning and she would help make breakfast or lunch or whatever we were eating with the family that day. And look, look at her. She had to go get one. She just had to, (laughs) she had to be like us. 
Uh, but she didn't spend the night that that night. So she came over that morning, and I helped her bring her bags in and whatever. And me and my cousin were opening our gifts. And uh, I wasn't expecting my grandma to get me a Nintendo 64 because it's my grandma, right? I mean, $5 and a kiss on the cheek would probably most kids got. I don't know. Uh, so she was like, hey, there's one more bag in my trunk. Can you go get it? It's kind of big. And I was, I didn't think anything of it. I thought she was having me go bring in like a crock pot or something for my mom or whatever. And I was like, yeah, sure. I brought it in. She's like, this, this, this one's for you. And it was a big box in like a, like a, I don't know, Sears or Macy's bag or whatever. It was a big, big box wrapped, whatever. She bought me a Nintendo 64 for Christmas. It was, it's like, it's my most memorable console gift. It's my most memorable Christmas gift ever, I would say. It's just like, I was so excited. I wanted to hook it up. And of course, my mom told me I couldn't hook it up because the family was coming over. And I was like, but (laughs) Mario 64, you know. It's right here. The future of games is here. No more, no more Sonic the Hedgehog spinning around, okay? This is, this is the future. Okay, and I was like, I need a subscription to Nintendo Power. I need, <laughs> I need, you know, I need the red controller because this is Mario. I need the blue controller because I like blue. I need all these controllers. I need everything. Just give it to me. So, uh, and then the next day, they were like, okay, we can go buy you one more game. And it was between Pilot Wings and Wayne Gretzky's 3D Hockey. And, well, you know, I didn't, get, I didn't buy Pilot Wings, which was a bad decision. <laughs> Wayne Gretzky's 3D Hockey is not a great game. It's okay. But it does kind of look like Rock'em Sock'em Robots sometimes. But but yeah, that's my that's my favorite Christmas story. It's uh, one I hold dear. I still have that Nintendo 64 downstairs. I wonder what it is about the N64 that I feel like I hear a lot of people associate with Christmas time. Because that actually holds my most memorable Christmas gift thing because it was one of the best and also when I say one of the worst I mean worst because I was a kid and I'll explain in a second so my parents are were anti-video game I mean heck they were like anti-tv I was only allowed to watch one 30 minute television show and that was it like I got no screen time you know my mom thought that um people made video games just so we could be like I don't know they turn your brain to mush that stuff all right yeah but my cousin who lived with us for a little while, he had an N64 and all the video games, and I'd watch him with big bug eyes. They'd play uh, Ocarina of Time, and I was like, I want N64. I want Nintendo 64. And I'm like, Mom, please, 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 just one console. Like, just one, and I'll never have another console for the rest of my life, which clearly is not true now. Um, And so Christmas morning, I went downstairs, and there was a Nintendo 64 under the tree, but it wasn't wrapped. (laughs) <laughs> and I had made the request to Santa. So that's the, also the year I realized Santa didn't exist. So that's why I was great and horrible at the same time. Mom's like, oh, yeah, you Aww. want a N64? Here. Oh, I'm gonna no. go <laughs> <laughs> so the good thing is I got my N64. The bad news is my mom's like, well, guess what? Santa isn't real. <laughs> Damn. Damn. That's that hard love right there. <laughs> <laughs> yep, exactly it. And I had my one game. So like, this is how gaming's so different then and now, and depending on the person. Like I just had Wave Race sixty four, and I had to just play the heck out of it for at least probably six months before I was able to get one more game. <laughs> yeah, gosh, game like everybody's like everybody talks about. I, I always feel like everybody talks about how they had like every popular game ever. I'm like. Dude, I had Super Mario Brothers and Ninja Turtles for like a year and a half before I got another game, okay? And most of them came from my cousin, so they were hand-me-downs. They weren't even like real games, right? Like yep. the game I got, the game after I got Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game, was Tom Sawyer's Adventures, okay? <laughs> which is a, which is a really terrible and now that I think about it, slightly racist uh <laughs> rip-off of Bayou Billy, which is also not a great game. Like you floated down a raft, you or you f- floated down a river on a raft, and uh, you know tried to avoid the rocks, and 
the character in Tom Sawyer, I'm not trying to be racist, this was his name, Engine Joe, would run along uh, the side of the river and shoot at you. Say no more. Okay. Say no more. <laughs> so I apologize if that offended everybody. That's the character's name. I was not trying to be racist. Right. And and Corey was using the quote marks. He was not yes. uh, really saying it. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, wow. that was, I had that game for a long time. And then, uh, you know, at, while we're on, while we're on Christmas, it wasn't really a Christmas gift. It was more of a birthday gift. But my grandma also bought me a Game Boy. That was my first console I ever owned, was, or first video game thing I ever owned was Game Boy. She bought me that with Tetris and boxing. It was just called boxing. I don't, I still don't understand how to play that game. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it was it, like my grandma really came through with games. Aww. So uh, there you go. Yeah. All right, Laurent, tell right, us something so, that's very Christmassy. Oh well, or well. All right, so well, well, I'm one of those people like um, like if uh, I I'm kind of bought humbuggy around this time of year. Mm-hmm. I I really am because I mean like I worked in retail long enough that you know like it just it just sucked the soul out of me. Um. But before I became this bah humbug uh, like type person, right? Um, Christmas still like had like that magic for me back back before I got to be this guy that I am. And um, so um, I gr- when I graduated from high school, like I uh, like a week later, I was at boot camp. I was in the military, you know, and stuff like that. So um, so actually my first um, so actually my first Christmas was I wound up being my first Christmas away from family ever and stuff like that. So um, so. On a, uh, like I got I got a chance to talk to my mom and, and some family and stuff like that, and um and I was telling them I was like hey like the uh, like 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 there's this new video game system that came out called the PlayStation, and um and and I'm not going to be around to get it when it comes out and everything like that. And my mom my mom swarping down. She was like she was like well uh, I'm not getting that for you. I'm not getting that for you. Like you're you're a grown man now. Like you can spend because you can spend your own money for something like that. You know now because uh, because you know like she gotten weary of buying video game systems for me. <laughs> so 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 I was like okay well I mean you know it it is what it is like I'll just wait till we're back in we're back in the states and, and I think we're I think at the time we we're going to be back in like February or March. Um, and uh, and PlayStations are notorious for coming out in like in like October and November. Uh, well, we know that now. Like, but I think the PS One originally came out sometime in November, so it was closer to more closer to Thanksgiving than it was to, to Christmas when it came out. But like I said, I I was out of the country at that time, <clears throat> so um, so you know, like things had gone by. You know, I, I more times I talked to my mom back at home and stuff like that. You know, I was kind of I was still kind of hinting at it, but she just was not budging. She was like, no. She was like, she was like, well, how about you do this? Like, you know, like you like you're not spending money now because you're you're out you're out on deployment and stuff like that. You're gonna have plenty of money when you get back to buy it when you know whenever you want. And I was like, okay, sure, whatever. I'll just get it when I'll just get it when I get back, whatever. So um, so I want to say it was a week or two. In December, into December, um, like we have a mail call and everything, right? And um, and 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 where I was stationed at, like like there was there was two. You you found out if you had mail coming, not by when they called your name. You wouldn't go. You wouldn't looked on a list. And this list was actually pretty cool because this list was the design. Like it, it broke up. It broke up the line. Basically, there was a there was a there was a line for people who just had letters or envelopes, and there was a line for people who had actual packages and stuff like that. And I saw I was on the care package side, right? So I was like, okay, you know, like like more than likely, you know, like I'm getting I'm getting some random stuff, you know, you know, just to say we miss you and stuff like that. So like they 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 bring out this box, and um and I'm like. This is a big ass box, you know, like it, but you know, it, it, but it was so inconspicuous, right? Because like, it didn't look like, cause if anyone remembers the PS one console, it came in a, it came in like a rectangular box that was kind of, that was on the slim side. So I was like, I was like, okay, so I don't know what's in here. I'm staring thinking, you know, like it might be, it might be just a regular, like, you know, care package, you know, like, 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 like treats and things like that. So, you know, I get it back. I actually, I actually went back to my. I, for some strange reason, I went back to my actual workspace and not like where where we um, were, uh, not my um, not where we sleep at and stuff like that. And I actually opened the box, 
and um, and I looked inside the box, and 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 one of my coworkers was was walking past me, and he and he looked over my shoulder. He's like, "Holy shit!" And I, and, <laughs> <laughs> and it was a freaking and it was a freaking PlayStation, right? <laughs> it was the PS One, wow. the, the first gen PlayStation One in there, right? And I I was floored. But here's the thing about it: like, I did not tell my mom, you know, what type of games I was interested in. So she actually she actually picked up three games. I'm pretty sure she had help because because Valerina Toshinden was in there, which was like which is like one of the best like first gen first gen fighting games for the for the PlayStation. Um, there was another game, Philosoma, which was basically like a shooter. Just think um, just think Gradius, uh, except it was more 3D ish. If that makes any sense, and I can't remember what the third game was, but here here I am with a, with a PlayStation, three games. That you know, like I didn't ask for, and I'm just in man. I was just like, shit. Like, what do I do? Like, you know, <laughs> you know, like I there was like I could not get on. A, I could not get on the phone and call my mom. Like we were on deployment, so you know I had to wait until like we got those. We got that. So like I pull everything up the box, and down the bottom of the box, there's a handwritten letter. And so I so I pull the letter out and I read it, and and it, it literally says. This is the last time I'm buying anything like this for you for Christmas. <laughs> From now on, uh-huh. you're buying me stuff like this for Christmas. Ah, <laughs> uh. yeah. So, but there's there 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 is a there is a down there is a there is a, there is a bad part to this story though. Oh, my mom, boy. my mom bought me a PlayStation. She bought me some games. No memory card. Mm, the memory <laughs> cards. <laughs> oh, no gamers memory today card. will never know. <laughs> No memory card. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Isn't that the worst? I remember because I, like I never had a PlayStation, and I my first console that required memory cards was a GameCube. And well, no, I lied. It was the Dreamcast. The Dreamcast, and mm-hmm. like when I found out I couldn't save my game, I was like, "Why can't I save my game?" <laughs> Because like I yeah. I never owned a console that required a memory card, so like I wasn't and like I wasn't like, like everything was cartridge based. The only magazine I had subscribed to up to that point was Nintendo Power because I only had Nintendo consoles and Sega consoles, and Sega didn't like. Okay, I had the occasional like EGM, but like I stopped subscribing to EGM because I got a Nintendo sixty four instead of a Saturn. So yep. like, why would I? continue subscribing to a sega magazine when i was playing nintendo 64 and so like i got a dreamcast when they went on sale for it was like they sold this bundle it was uh what was it it was sonic adventure and uh nba 2k1 and the demo to sonic 2 and the dreamcast and it was 99 dollars because it was like right after they announced they were discontinuing the dreamcast I was like, well, this is a great time to buy the Dreamcast because all the games are going to be like 15 bucks. And, uh, you know, I bought Crazy Taxi. I got uh, all kinds of just. Oh, man. Crazy Taxi. Dude, I got, I got what? Shenmue 1. I got all kinds of. I got the whatever the Sonic equivalent of Mario Party was. I think it was called Sonic Shuffle and it was terrible. Yeah. Yeah, that was it. That was it. Yeah. Uh, Blue Stinger I got for like three dollars. I got so many games. I had I had Resident Evil two and three for Dreamcast, and then I traded them in, which was really stupid because now they're worth like a ton of money. That was really stupid. Uh, but yeah, I bought that all for like one hundred fifty bucks. I got like ten games in a Dreamcast for one hundred fifty bucks, and then I got home Damn. and realized I needed a memory card, and they were <laughs> they were still like twenty five or thirty bucks. Oh yeah, like, oh, those, those VM, those VMUs were those VMUs were a little pricey. Yeah, well. It seemed like pricey at the time, but yeah. now you go to pay for a hard drive and it's like, you know, the SSDs are like two hundred dollars for a terabyte. For real, like I, I swear, we're we're spoiled now because like things like these systems come with internal with internal storage now and everything. Now, yeah. true, like it's not it's always not the the biggest well, amount of internal storage. I mean, that's you know. that's what turned me onto the Xbox. I was like, I don't need a memory card. Exactly. It's already in there. By the way. Did you know the internal memory or the internal hard drive for the original Xbox was eight gigs? Yeah. In two, yeah, in two thousand one. Yeah, yo, dude, yo, yo, people used to people used to buy the Xboxes and cannibalize them for the hard drives. Yeah. Oh, good times. Because what what was the original what was the original price of the Xbox? Was it a four hundred dollar machine? No, it was. 
It was 300? No, it was two... Uh, let's see. Hold on. No, it was 300. Because the PlayStation... PlayStation was 300. PS2 and the game the GameCube was 200. Uh, yeah. And I remember everybody... Like, at first, everybody wanted the GameCube because it was $100 cheaper. Mm-hmm. And then nobody wanted the GameCube after that for some reason. Yeah. Womp womp. Yeah, but that was... But honestly, that was the cheapest way to get an 8, to get an eight gigabyte uh, hard drive back yeah. then. Like... Buy buy an Xbox, cannibalize it, you know, because you can put another. Because all you gotta do is just sideload the um the OS on there, and then and then you can just put any um any size hard, uh, hard drive in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was uh, I and I really uh was upset when I found out memory cards existed, and then like it always <laughs> sucked because like for GameCube, I bought sports games for the GameCube, and like an entire memory card would be used for a sports game, so I would have to buy, mm-hmm. like, three more, and I was like, what are you doing? Stupid. Stupid. Like, why is uh, why is the sports games always took so much data? It didn't matter, like, what, what like, console they're on. Like, they, yeah. they ate up a memory card. Yeah, I don't know. It was just, it was just stupid. So, I don't know. I, by the way, side tangent, if anybody out there listening wants to get rid of any old xbox equipment please tell me because i will take it off your hands what are you doing just you know making a little xbox scene to to you know be a better xbox host and look like i actually play xbox Mm -hmm. you know i want to i want to you know put all these xboxes up here with my oled switch that leron didn't buy Maybe Santa will bring you one for Christmas, Laura. Maybe. 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 You know. <laughs> no. By the way. Never mind. I'll tell you guys later. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyways, that was a good topic. Yeah. Festive topic. Yeah, just topic. in just in time for Christmas. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, when this goes live, we'll we will be like what five days out from Christmas. Yeah. Four or five. Yeah. 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 Like Christmas on Christmas on Saturday, so yeah. Yeah. Good topic, Laron. Stephanie, you're up. It's your topic. Ah, well <laughs> I was gonna say this time of year uh, well, I don't know. I haven't seen a lot of game big, big game releases this month so far. So I know a lot of people have said they've they've hit their back backlog. Hey, five nights, to Fred, ex- five nights at Freddy's just dropped. Okay, yeah. That's yeah, not a big I, I, release. I, I, Get out of here. <laughs> oh, come on. The hype train that happened for that at E3 when they announced that? Come on, guys. What, come all on. the, like, seven-year-olds who were watching E3? Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> you sound like my nephew. All he wants to do is play Fortnite, Minecraft, and Five Nights at Freddy's. That's all anybody cares about under the age of 10. Well, I tried. I, I I tried. Maybe maybe if someone maybe if someone maybe if someone from the from the development team or the publisher for Five Nights at Freddy maybe they heard just enough hype and emphasis before you like squashed on it that we that we might get a, a promo copy to try out. Yeah, let's get a promo copy of Five Nights at Freddy's Six. I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about why don't we breach. Why don't we just I'm promote the, the entire the, series? I'm talking about the new one. Why don't we just promote the entire series and t- remind everybody that's on Xbox Game Pass? Play it now, earn your perks, claim your rewards. I don't know. Speaking of Game Pass, didn't didn't some didn't some new stuff just drop? Yeah, yeah. Alien Fire Team Elite. It's downloading right now, so I can play. Yes, with it. yes. I don't Thank know anything you. about oh. aliens, but I can shoot stuff. So it's fun. fun. Yeah, you don't know anything about aliens because you don't watch popular movies. I know. I don't watch anything. I got it. We went over that last week. <laughs> got it. <laughs> Two weeks ago. I don't know. By the by the way, by the way, watching the, uh, Chris watch that clip and his and his heart hurt. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. I don't watch things. Well, I am I am downloading Fire Team Elite right now. I'm glad we. <gasps> Yay! I'm glad. Lasby is going to be so so <laughs> excited. Been... He's been wanting to play. He's been wanting. To, he's been wanting to play Aliens Fireteam Elite with me for the longest time. I know. I get. I get a message from him once every couple weeks. Hey, Aliens Fireteam Elite's coming to the Game Pass. I'm like, I know. 
I will download it when it comes out. <laughs> <laughs> and then Stephanie poked, hey, are you going to play Fireteam with me and Lasby? I'm like, yeah, when it comes to Game Pass. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it's kind of, yeah, it's infectious. I, I'm now a believer. It, it's fun. Anyway, well, the point I was getting at might not really be related is most underrated games because I figured there are many of them out there. And while I'm trying to kill my backlog, why not add more to my backlog? And if I'm going to add more games to it, I want to add underrated games. Mm. So um, I'm going to have to turn on my switch for this because I have a bunch on here that you might be interested. No worries. I was going to say, like, if you guys need time to think about it, I actually posted that pose that question um, at Nintendo. Nintendo's over 30s club. Oh, I put. Uh, okay, here's some examples of some people who um, th- uh, of underrated games. Uh, Fuga, Melodies of Steel, Night in the Woods, Dragons Dogma, uh, Goemon, Mystical Ninja, and Mace. Oh, the Goemon, Dark Age. Mystical Ninja. Yeah, yeah, Goemon. I hear people really like on the N64. Yeah. Halo Wars. Yes, Halo Wars is awesome. Really? Nobody plays Halo Wars. No, 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 no. no I, meant, I meant underrated. I, I yeah, meant really no, dude, underrated. Dude, that's why, that's why they shut down Ensemble. That's why Microsoft shut down Ensemble, because it didn't even hit 500,000 units. Damn, I did not know that. Yeah, and then uh, Sega and uh, Creative Assembly ended up doing Halo Wars 2, which is even better. And it sold less, because it was on Xbox One. <laughs> wow. Halo, by the way, Halo Wars 1 and 2 are on Game Pass. If you like RTS at all, please play those games. They're simple, but the campaigns are awesome. Blur did all the cutscenes, and it looks like you're watching a freaking movie. It's awesome. Nice. Sorry. Yeah, that, that, no, no, sorry. This is a long list here. Like, I don't know how I could like just say it all. I mean, I don't know if I agree with Superman 64, but... <laughs> um, that, that that no, that game's garbage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh the la- the last remnant, Tales of Symphonia. Ooh. Okay, the last remnant, yes. Last Tales remnant. Symphonia, yes. Yes, yes. General Chaos, Shadow Run. Let's see what Shadow else. Run, yes. Super Isn't, that, Ma- fact, isn't that game making a comeback? Shadow Run's making a comeback. Is it? That'd yeah, be great. They, there was a Kickstarter for Shadow Run at some point. Yeah, but... well I know Shadow I know Shadow Run Chronicles is coming out, and that's basically like the three games? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. I just know there was a Kickstarter for that at some point. I will say um, one, I would say more on the recent end of things. And go figure, it's a Zelda example because I'm a Zelda. Well, I just feel like of all Zelda titles, people think of the main ones like Ocarina of Time, Breath of the Wild, or whatever. But I feel that um, Link Between Worlds is severely underrated as a Zelda oh, title. Yes, hell yes. Thank and you. And they, they need to bring that to the Switch. Yes, I agree with that. There was a rumor that that was the next game coming. Ah, uh, it was there, there was a rumor because like what they want to do after it's after Breath of the Wild two. By the way, it's uh, oh. I remember a thing where they said they want to do uh every like couple every every other zelda game is going to be a remaster a remake Mm -hmm. and then a new title Mm -hmm. so breath of the wild was the new game hyrule warriors was the remaster link's awakening was the remake and then they kind of fell off that when breath of the wild 2 got delayed because well Mm. you know but I remember yeah. them saying they want to flip flop and kind of have a Zelda experience every year. I think it's a great idea, and I, I hope that's the case. Um, and I doubly hope that it's Link Between Worlds because I just <laughs> think I don't know. I, I don't know why I don't hear about it enough from other people. But it's one of my top favorite Zelda games. I think the mechanic is interesting, and and especially now that we're getting into a new generation of gamers that might never end up playing uh, a Link to the Past, which was the spiritual successor of. Like I think Link Between Worlds is at least like quote unquote modernized enough for a the modern player to appreciate. Mm-hmm. those mechanics and stuff like that so that's mm-hmm. my personal pick i read off a couple examples anyone want to provide their personal uh underrated game that's a must play yes Ooh. i do i have a bunch well not a bunch but i have enough that people will appreciate uh let's see i think 
Ukulele in the Impossible Lair. Uh, I know Ukulele was the first one was kind of pitched as like uh, the team left Rare to create their own studio, and they wanted to make a game in the vein of Banjo Kazooie and Conquer's Bad for a Day, and they did mm. with Ukulele. It was good, it wasn't great, but it was good. It was definitely one of those collectathon platformer games. But Ukulele and the Impossible Lair is the side-scrolling sequel to that game, and it's awesome. They they snatched a bunch of people from Retro who worked on Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. And it's basically oh. it's basically Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. But what? Way better. What system is this on? It's on everything. You can buy it on Switch. Oh. It's usually on it's on sale all the time. Alright, I gotta like favorite it. What's it called again? Ukulele and the Impossible Lair. Okay. Uh it's so good. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Um, Wait, is that the one with the chameleon? Yep. Okay, now I know what you're talking about. Uh, let's see here. Other games. Uh, they're towards the top here. Do-do-do. I'm getting there. Uh, Odd World Stranger's Wrath. I think it's extremely underrated. I don't think it gets talked about enough. Uh, yeah. Set in the Odd World universe, obviously. And, like, you play a bounty hunter, and you're you just kind of go and... It's kind of like a mission-based shooter, but you get it also has a scoring system. If you capture your bounties alive, you get double the points, and you get the better ending if you capture them all alive. Uh, it's really good. I really love that game. Lightfall is a 2D, fast-paced uh, side-scroller. Uh, it's it's really cool. It's like <laughs> it's if like a Sonic game was a real platformer. It's super fast paced, but also really methodical and really, it's like almost like Sonic and Mario had a baby, but they did it correctly. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's really cool. And, uh, a game similar to Lightfall called, uh, the King's bird. I would recommend that as well. It's an indie game. It's on sale all the time too. I actually think it's on sale right now. I so, that one. Yeah. Uh, it was free on Xbox. A couple like a couple, like a month or two ago. It's it's really cool and really good. Uh, if you like JRPGs, Cosmic Star Heroine is pretty good. It definitely feels like a Super Nintendo game straight up. Definitely just really cool game. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Oh, if you like Final Fantasy Tactics, if you are a Final <gasps> Fantasy Tactics fan, and you want something that scratches that itch, but you also want something with a really unique art style that kind of reminiscent of like Psychonauts meets Tim Burton esque. Fell Seal, The Arbiter's Mark. If, even if you don't like the art style, the game is straight up a love letter to Final Fantasy Tactics. It is so good. And like, there's over a hundred characters you could add to your party. They all have unique abilities. You can level them up separately or like you can build separate parties to go into battle with and kind of go in separate. It's so good. Highly recommended. Uh, I think, I think that's probably going to be it for now for me. I want to give Laron a chance to come up with some underrated games. Don't say monster hunter rise, Laron. <laughs> I think that game's overhyped, to be honest with you. Well, ooh, you. I really, I really do. I really do. You made me buy the game, and now you're saying it's overrated. <laughs> you made me. You're like, you better buy this game. <laughs> I did not say it like that. I did not say it like that. <laughs> I said, I, yes, Lorado, I'll buy it. Don't hurt me. <laughs> I, 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 I think it was more along the lines of, you will buy this game. <laughs> um. Okay. <laughs> Um, I've got, I've got, I've got, a, I've got a few. Um, these are the only ones I can think of in recent memory because on oh, God, like, a, uh, like I've been playing video games for like forever. Um, uh, uh, in, okay, uh, so Corey, have you heard of a game called Enslaved Odyssey yep. to the West? Yeah, it was Ninja Theory, Ninja Theory's second game. Also, yep. that game is amazing. I wish it was backwards it, compatible. Yeah, and it's okay. Not. I. Yeah, it, yeah, that was a that was a good game, but um, but it didn't get a lot. It didn't get a lot of traction. Um, it was a good game. I I enjoyed it. Um, uh, they're back they're, in the PS. 
Oh, I, uh, I was going to play off of uh, Odyssey to the West. If you have a PlayStation 3, the game that they did after that is also super underrated. Heavenly Sword. Heavenly Sword, yes. Also super underrated. Yep. Yeah, Um. Uh. let me see. There's Legend of Lagaya. Hmm. Yeah, like um, that was actually a really fun game, and they had and they had a lot of different stuff going on. Like it was it was quintessential JRPG, but they had mashups and stuff because like it like it had it had like it had like a rhythm game like a, a rhythm game like mini game in there. Uh, it had <laughs> there was like there was like a romance there was like a uh, like a like a romance mini game like it it had all sorts of stuff going on. It was like this big R- as RPG too. Like it, <laughs> uh, yeah, like yeah, like fun on PS One, and then one that you know, like I feel like I, I know Ed would agree with me if he if he was anywhere close by. But Sleeping Dogs, mm. yeah, I hear that's a good one. Yeah, Sleeping Dogs, like man, I I enjoyed that game, and and the sad part is like I I got that game off of, like the humble bundle for like five dollars, and man, like I was I was freaking impressed. Like it was it was. There were so many elements of that game, like uh, like like the story was tight, like it was compelling, like you like you played you played the main character you played with, like you wanted to see what was going on with him, but you also wanted to see what was going on with some of the side characters, you know the the um the the, the support characters that are in the game and stuff like that, like yeah, like um those are the three that I can think of um those are three those are three that come to mind actually without me actually having to look up a list, <laughs> yeah. uh I don't know like um oh I yeah. have. For Xbox fans, I have an extremely underrated game, and I know we've brought it up on the show before. Uh, Mist Walker's uh, Lost Odyssey. Oh yeah. The basically the Final Fantasy XI we never got. It's incredible. Mm-hmm. You play as the immortal warrior Kaim, and spoilers—he has amnesia because it's a JRPG. Uh, <laughs> but you kind of like play through him finding his memories and building relationships with uh, other mortals and stuff. And it's so good. Oh my gosh. It's so good. And on Xbox series X, they did the, all the enhancements and stuff to it. It looks like a brand new game, dude. It's so good. God, it looks oh, good. I, oh, I have a more, I have a more recent game now that, that, that I definitely heard was underrated, even though I enjoyed it. Uh, Samus returns Metroid two on the, um, on the three DS. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, I think like everybody a lot of, was done with their 3ds at that point. Yeah. Well, that that was that was one thing. But a lot of people, a lot of people, like you know, like uh, they didn't, they 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 liked a lot of the stuff about the updates, but they also didn't like a few things, like you know, like like Sam has now had like a basically a, like a melee attack and stuff like that, and it was basically like a, a parry system slash counter attack, mm-hmm. and people people weren't feeling that, but all of a sudden they they love it to death in Metro Dread. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Man. You know, uh, I've heard of this game. I think Grayson might have mentioned it, but actually, you know what? I think there was also a Talk the Walk on it, so maybe that was I don't know. But tell me why? Yeah. Yes. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. It's on Game like, Pass. I heard it's like. Okay. Oh. Oh. Really? Okay. I'm downloading it. Yeah. It's at Microsoft actually. Ma- Microsoft actually published that game. They picked it up because, like, I don't know the weird st- because. Th- 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 Slight spoilers for Tell Me Why, I guess. Like, you play as a you play as a transgender character, and Don't Nod uh, has like has a publishing deal for Life is Strange, right? And they actually pitch this as the next Life is Strange game, but Japanese culture is really weird about gay and transgender mm-hmm. still, right? So like. Microsoft picked it up and it's it, they made it its own thing. So which is interesting cuz they're into a ton of other super freaky shit, but whatever. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> banging, you know, underage girls is no problem, but, you know, people being right. gay and, <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, see it's, it's something like that where the game is, uh, you know, everyone who's played it has the best things to say about it, but if I haven't talked to other gamers in this community i would have known nothing about it mm-hmm. yeah yeah it's For real. it's a really good uh I don't, walking I don't, walking sim is not the correct term but i don't know if you played life is strange it's basically life is strange but you know Great. it's a good one good one look at all these games guys man so yeah many good see games. so there's some uh treasures out there in the vast world of 
I don't know. I don't know if the, there was that many games back back in the day, but it, <laughs> with the I just felt like especially with the e for example, just example the e shop. I'm sw- swarmed with all these like three ninety nine games or even just garbage sixty dollar games. Um, no offense to the devs who made those garbage games, but I'm just saying like there's so <laughs> much out there now that it's almost like I got. You know how people get alert fatigue when they get too many emails or too mm-hmm. many texts? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I now rely on seeing the blockbuster titles, but I f- also feel like I'm going to miss out on a lot of the great games Yeah. because of that. Oh, speaking of blockbuster titles that people think are thought were trash games because they launched on Xbox One at a time where nobody owned one, Sunset Overdrive and Quantum Break. Those games severely underplayed i think people have come around on sunset overdrive finally but Uh, severely underplayed gems if you like control you should play quantum break oh look i love i love quantum break like quantum break almost made me buy an xbox one yeah but then it came to pc exactly they fucked up exactly (laughs) i mean they they didn't though that was just the first step of their plan to play anywhere and they just didn't know how to market it yet yeah yeah um yeah like i yeah, like Quantum Break. When I saw, when I saw them, oh, oh, when I saw them unveil that at one of the, at one of the shows, I want was it E three that they unveiled it at, or was it another show? No, it was the Xbox reveal, the Xbox One reveal event when they showed. Yeah. Well, when they no, showed maybe that, maybe it was E three. I th- no, I think you're right. I think it was the E three before the Xbox came out because the big thing at the Xbox One reveal event is they didn't show any games, and people were mm. pissed. And so Mm -hmm. they came out and their messaging was, hey, E3 is going to be all about the games. We're not going to talk about anything else. We're just talking about the games. That's right. Yeah, that's right. I remember that. Yeah. And then they showed off Quantum Break. They showed off Rise. They showed off Dead Rising 3. And they showed off... They showed off a couple other things. Oh, they did that really cool uh, Master Chief Poncho Halo trailer that never came to fruition, too. So... Yeah, I remember though seeing that trailer and 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 it well seeing 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 them show that off and then like and then like it's what what pissed me off is the shit they showed off didn't even make it to the game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, but that's that's every game now. So that I mean that was yeah. also at a time when like remember when they showed Watch Dogs for the first time and oh god they had they did, couldn't announce it. it was for Xbox One and PS4 because it they those consoles hadn't been announced yet and they were like yeah oh yeah this is what the game looks like. But not on these consoles. Oh, also, <laughs> when this game is fifteen dollars at Christmas time, we're going to release it on the Wii U for sixty dollars, and yet some sucker is going to buy it for sixty dollars and play it and review it because he was doing a Nintendo podcast at the time and nothing else. <laughs> this sounds a little. This sounds a little too on the nose. <laughs> <laughs> that that person may or may not have been me, by the way. <laughs> this Maybe that's like why I didn't really it. care for Watch Dogs One. <laughs> Like at this, all. this sounds like this sounds like a story for another episode of Boss Rush podcast. Oh no, we t- I've told you it's probably on like fifteen episodes of Power Block. Oh <laughs> 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 uh, man, gosh, man, good times. Yeah, good times. Good topic. Good topic. Great topic. Underrated games. Gosh, guys. So I just want to I just want to point out that sometimes. Like, on a topic-based show, you, sometimes you get some stinkers, right? Sometimes you just, like, somebody picks a topic, nobody wants to talk about it. Like, after, like, yeah. three seconds. But then you have to extend it because it's already out there. Mm-hmm. We haven't had any stinker topics. So, proud proud of this. I, I So, oh, I, I... I was getting nervous. I'm like, what's he alluding to? Did no, I, I pick a real so, <laughs> No, I... Sometimes I just want to talk about how great the show is since we rebooted it and re kind of structured it and everything. And, you know, it's, I just, I'm proud of the show. I'm really proud of what we're doing with the show and everything else. And now the stuff that's going along with it, I'm like, I'm like really excited and really amped now for everything. Not that I wasn't, but like I was excited, but in like a nervous sort of way, cause I didn't have anything done. And like, we weren't really, like we were like, yeah, we'll plan it, and then we didn't. But now that everything's planned and ready to go, and everything's launching in January, it's like three weeks away. I'm just like, it's crazy. Like, yeah. It's like it's like Christmas, 1996, all over again. I'm ready to open this box. And... 
Uh-oh. But yeah, I'm just proud of you guys. I'm really proud. Like a proud... Oh, heartfelt moment. Yeah. Um. Let's see. What are we doing here? Uh, we... How about... F- do you have a topic? or? I do. We... I, po- I posted one in the Discord that I thought would be a good topic. Um, but I don't know if we want to save it now. Since we do have... You know, spoilers. We have another show to record after this. Uh, we could probably do that right i guess we could do this topic topic ideas that's the wrong (laughs) wrong show uh (laughs) after dark oh god topic ideas there it is i found it guys don't worry uh so i i brought up the xbox documentary um earlier Uh this 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 episode and i started thinking like xbox has been really good about trying to you know at least state that they want to preserve games and you know backwards compatibility initiative and phil spencer's been out there saying that he even supports emulation on older games and that games should be treasured and 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 packed away nicely for future generations to learn from the history and stuff and like this xbox documentary really dove into a lot of that actually uh in the early episodes and like Sony did the God of War documentary, which was really good. And Gorilla's doing the Horizon cast now on the making of the first game leading up to the second game. And, like, I want more of that stuff from the creators. And, like, I just think it's really fascinating when the creators talk about their own stuff in a very real way, right? Like, I think that's why, in terms of the Xbox side of things, a lot of people relate to Phil Spencer because, like, he kind of talks with a real style attitude instead of like a marketing, you know, I want to sell you this box and I want to sell you these games, right? Like he's very open and very real about what he's, the messages he's delivering. And like the Sony documentary was actually really surprising in that way also. And like, I want more. And I just, the topic is like, do you guys want more of that style of, of content? You know, whether it's a podcast or a documentary or like, you know, uh, Double Fine, the makers of Psychonauts, have a really great documentary on their YouTube channel, too, as well, uh, about the history of, of... Hell yes! Hell yes, yeah. exactly, yeah. Uh, and, like, who would you want to see have one of these documentaries? Uh, uh, let's see. Let me let me think real quickly here. Um, You're sure I don't thinking do, a lot. I don't, I don't want you to hurt yourself, Laurent. Well, no, I don't. I, well, yeah, I'm thinking a lot because I don't want to go on these big, expansive like franchises. Like, I don't want. I don't want them doing Final Fantasy. You know, if they are going to do Final Fantasy, they need to split, pick like one specific game. You know, to do their documentary or retrospect or whatever. Um, but you know, um, shoot. Honestly, honestly, I would like to see. I would like to see the approach that Mercury. I given that I mentioned it earlier as an as an underrated game. I'd like to see the approach that Mercury Steam took for uh, for for Metroid: Samus Returns. What they what they did to revitalize that, I, I I'm really curious. Like, did they did they actually not steal? Like, steal is a very negative word. Did they borrow some? Did they borrow some elements from a, uh, AM2R? Um, I think I think that was mm-hmm. AMR or was AM2R a- another AM2R, Metroid Two yeah. re- remake? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, did they actually did they actually like? you know think what they want to do like because because like if you look at if you look at the original game boy game and you look at that 3ds game they don't look anything similar the only thing similar is the sound the soundtrack which is remixed Mm -hmm. (laughs) that's the only thing similar about those two games you know like yeah stuff like that i would definitely love to like or you know what you know given that i'm talking about nintendo topics i would look like I've heard so much about how like Miyamoto came up with the idea for the Legend of Zelda and stuff like that. I want to see. I want to. I want to yes. see him. I want to see him storyboard that. I want to see him do that. You know, um, because one thing I've said about one thing I said about the old school like NES games, for example, is like like those games came from a day from from a time in in gaming history where. Where like the games are so bare bones that you use that you you have to use your imagination to fill in gaps in the story and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like Metroid is like prime example of that, you know, stuff like that. Even even the Legend of Zelda, like uh, like like one of the things I remember. Okay, like so you remember um remember when you get the flute and you and you have to and you have no. to play it and those and those yeah. 
And those chords, I I swear, I swear, I made lyrics to those chords. Of course you did. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. You know, like you know, like so, like if I'm using, if I was using my imagination, you know, for, to like to as I was playing this game, like it's, I would love to see like the imagination, the thought process that went into like building these games back then and back then in those times. You know, like eventually, like on the on the NES, we got so. Like you think how powerful like Super Mario Three was? Like that was a powerful game. I mean, I feel like I feel like that was like I feel like that was like Nintendo at it as like Apex with that with that console by that point, you know? Mm-hmm. Um just like it's like if you look at some of the some of the successes that Sega had with the Genesis and stuff like that. Like when I started coming out those with those heavy with those heavy cartridges that you were using like a sixteen megabit mm-hmm. like like architecture and stuff like that, like Beyond Oasis. Yo, like stuff like Dude, that. Dude, Beyond you know? Oasis, like if you're a Zelda fan, you should check out Beyond. Beyond Oasis, Oasis was another underrated game. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I gotta write all this down. Well, <laughs> I think I think it just came out at a time where Zelda was dominant, and like the only thing Sega really had to market was like Sonic <laughs> and Streets mm-hmm. of Rage. I think. Yeah. I mean, like, I feel like if you were a Nintendo gamer and you owned a Sega, you knew about Streets of Rage, but or or. Beyond an Oasis, but if you just only owned a Sega, you played games like Streets of Rage and stuff because Nintendo didn't have stuff like that. You know? Mm-hmm. Beyond Oasis, though. God, what a... Mm. Talk about it. You know, Laurent, since you mentioned Miyamoto um, and Zelda, I mean, this is probably common knowledge at this point, but a lot of what inspired him to create Zelda was just through exploring caves and forests and stuff um, when he was growing up. I think he grew up around Kyoto, mm-hmm. and... Like, when I was a kid, not that I am likening myself to Miyamoto at all, but I used to, like, make up video games of my own in my head just by stumbling around in the woods in my backyard. And, yeah. And just, you know, if that was in a document... Well, first of all, documentaries are just super hot and within, like, the last, you know, year or two. I think it would just be very inspiring, even if someone wasn't into video games and or and maybe they're a bit more a fan of mainstream stuff, they'll see that and get inspired. And I don't know. I just think that'd be such a feel-good documentary. Mm-hmm. Um, I think mm-hmm. I would like to see a documentary on some of the uh, indie... Well, uh, the, well, this publisher and uh, dev is kind of big now, but Annapurna... Yeah. Unless Anna first. Uh, and Devolver Digital. They're my personal uh, favorite developer slash publisher, and I'd love to see beh- um, them behind the scenes. Uh, maybe a non specific would just be any video game documentary that speaks to like music production. Like, talk to those people. You know, I don't think they really get enough credit, and I feel like certain games, like, the music just puts you in that certain mood and. Mm-hmm. Oh, I would just love to learn more about it. Yeah, Miyamoto seems to design games like that because Pikmin was the same way, where like mm. he he was inspired by the flowers he was pa- planting in his garden, and like he was like tossing the weeds, and he was like, "What if we designed a game around this?" And yeah, that's how Pikmin a, was born. That yeah. and like, uh, what wow, a, what a nerd! Well, it was like that. It, <laughs> It was that mixed with the 128 Mario's demo that they showed off on GameCube. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like that demo, that 128 Mario's demo ended up becoming GameCube because they were playing with technology and how to get more than one character on the screen at one time. And that's what they came up with. So, Hey, uh, I wish I could be that creative. Just be le- legit weeding, doing some sort of common household task and then bam, and video design, game ID. And design a whole video game off of it. Yep. Man, what a what a guy. That guy. We owe we owe a lot to that man. Mm-hmm. Speak oh, speaking of like documentaries, I it, uh, revolving around it's it's more of like a the studio that created Star Fox uh and now he makes the mm-hmm. Pixel Junk games. Uh Q Games is what the the studio's called, but he's the one of the original programmers on Star Fox and actually got it running on the original Game Boy. It's really a fascinating story. Uh but like they were like the first westerners to uh work inside Nintendo and they stuck them in a closet but it was Miyamoto's smoking <laughs> closet so like every like <laughs> like every hour hour and a half they would <laughs> hear him come in Seriously? the room yeah they come That's in the awesome. room and just wow. like start smoking behind them while they were working <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> Man, 
I have like a weird knowledge of useless things that happen in video games. <laughs> oh. Anyways, good talk. Good times. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I would like to see more of this stuff. I think, I don't know, it, it's weird seeing, because video games are so secretive all the time. And it's one of the last industries to really be that secretive. And it's really nice to see once in a while when a company opens up. You know, I mean, like, the God of War one even was super interesting because they were all, like, you could see the anger in some of their, like, in some of that. And, like, the crunch and how it was wearing on them and how they had to make, get this game perfect or the studio was going to close down. Right? Like, that was... Mm-hmm. I mean, they don't specifically say that in the documentary, but that's that was... Because God of War Ascension didn't do well, that space game they were doing got canceled, and they basically had to, like, God of War was like a, a do-or-die moment for them, and to get it perfect and as good as it was, now, I'm, I mean, I think I'm on the edge of, like, I don't think God of War is, like, a great game, I think it's a very good game, I think it's a very well-produced game, and the story is good, but, like, I don't think it's, like, the the greatest game on PlayStation at this by any means but i'm glad that that studio exists and they did such a great job rebooting a franchise that was utterly dead you know yeah Um, so i want to see more of this stuff for sure that's a good point i i you know we see documentaries um behind the scenes in the film industry i don't know scandalous things a lot of documentaries on true crime like, mm-hmm. when I'm just trying to think of the most popular documentaries, I'm like, huh, I don't think I've... Yeah. It's time for, you know, the people behind the gaming industry to kind of get their time in the spotlight and just be very interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, like, the stories that you hear usually come out of interviews or something from a... Not all the time, but, like, a disgruntled employee that's like, Ugh, I left because, you know, this crap was bad and i wanted to make my own studio and it's it's nice to see like somebody actually take the time to find all sides of the story and like produce something that's watchable and not Mm -hmm. some grumpy old person that you know yeah oh here's an example um what was that like one man show that uh that made stardew valley is that chucklefish uh well they're the publisher the guy that developed it is god i know what his name is so, to... well while you look it up but basically like to see the journey um you know of of this guy creating such a popular game stardew valley like that's a great story mm-hmm. you don't even have eight. to be a lover of yeah you know, you don't even have to be like an avid gamer to appreciate a documentary like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's just a great story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, gosh, that and like Axiom Verge, like anybody who develops a game by themselves is like a wizard. <laughs> oh, for real? <laughs> like, I mean, Tom Hap when he developed Axiom Verge and that that game turned out as well produced as it was. Like, I know he has game design background and stuff, and he came from that type of game design. But like, the fact that he did all that by himself except for some of the music was outsourced, was like, God, Axiom Verge is a gem of a game, by the way. Mm-hmm. Agreed. So, especially if you're done playing Metroid Dread and you still have that itch, you should buy Axiom Verge. Pro tip. I did buy Axiom Verge when it was on sale. Um, I held off on buying Axiom Verge 2. I heard it actually didn't hold up as well, I guess. Yeah, I've heard mixed things on 2 for sure well i'll worry about getting through the first one first yeah that's my thing i i played the first one and i played like five hours of it and i was close to the end and i just stopped playing it for some reason <laughs> got sucked into something else i guess but, all right cool good topic thanks self five <laughs> that's right i did that somebody's got to uh well since we don't have a guest we don't have another topic tonight and uh i think that's gonna probably wrap the show right sounds like a yeah, nice short and sweet nice hour and 27 minute 
episode for you people out there listening. Trying to Perfect. make the show shorter. It's it's working. Good feedback by people, by the way. Thanks for your feedback on the shorter episode last week. Yep. So. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Anyways. I want to thank everybody for watching and or listening to the Boss Rush Podcast. If you want your topic read on the show, you should tweet at us or email us. Tweet at us at Boss Rush Network or join our Discord server. That would really help too. be part of the fam, as the kids say. They still say that? I don't know. Nope. I don't know. Nope. Okay. I'm, I'm done. Uh, if you are listening on iTunes, please leave us a five-star review. If you're listening on YouTube, please subscribe. Cross 300 subscribers, kids, on YouTube. Woo! So that's a good job. Good job. On a channel only full of podcasts. I'd say that's all right. Stephanie, where can we find you? You can find me on Twitter at Klimov, K-L-I-M-O-V underscore author. Leron? Uh, you can find me everywhere. Just just. Just use this. Just use his name. Exodus eight zero three. E X O D U S eight zero three. Social media, uh, Twitch and YouTube. Uh, Gamer tag. Uh, don't forget Tuesday nights eight p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Twitch TV slash Exodus eight zero three. Crossroads PlayStation Podcast. Uh, or me and Austin Campbell, Nelly Lott, and Chris True. We hold it down with uh, PlayStation news, topics, and events, and all, all that good stuff. And uh, of course, here every Wednesday. Unless we unless we have a week off, which I don't know. Like I think the slave driver is not giving us any time off. Whoa, whoa, that's that that means a lot of things because I'm white and you're not. And it's, it's, there's about to be this whole thing. I don't I don't want to be okay, a part Captain of that. Captain Bly, mm. <laughs> concerned, very concerned about yeah. a lot of things right now. You can find me at I am Corey HD on Twitter and Instagram. You can find me hosting Arsenal X, the Xbox podcast here on the Boss Rush Network. A lot of cool stuff uh, coming up. Follow us on social media to find out when it's coming at Boss Rush Network. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, we love you. Goodbye. Good night. Merry Christmas. <laughs>